Joining me now, Ontario Labour Minister, and now a regular on the program, Monty McNaughton. Uh, good to see you back on the program, Minister. Um, so the, the minimum wage goes up to 15 bucks an hour. I know your government in 2018 opposed it, uh, campaigned on scrapping the Wynn government's plan to raise it to 15. Why did Premier Ford flip-flop on the issue? Well, look, the pandemic has changed uh, everything. Uh, there's about 760,000 workers in Ontario uh, today making a minimum wage. We want to ensure that they're going to have more uh, take-home pay. Uh, we all know that the cost of uh, many things are going up, and this will uh, give really three-quarters of a million people uh, more take-home pay. But what really changed? I mean, you say the pandemic changed everything, but the living wage in 2018, 2019, really wasn't much different. So, so what do you say to the folks who could have got this in the last three years and they say, look, I've lost more than $6,000 in lost wages from that cancellation. So what's your message to them today? Well, look, we're seeing, um, you know, the price of everything going up. Uh, inflation, inflation is really uh, hitting uh, people uh, in the pocket. Uh, this announcement today moving to $15 an hour uh, on January 1st means uh, for minimum wage earners, they're going to have almost $1,400 uh, extra uh, in their uh, pockets. But furthermore, we're also increasing the minimum wage for liquor servers and restaurants to go from $12 uh, in 55 cents an hour to $15 an hour. That's over $5,000 more uh, per year for those workers. So this is going to go a long ways uh, to helping those people. Okay. If the main reason, if the pandemic was the main rationale to boost minimum wage to $15 an hour, why not do it last year when grocery stores stopped paying the so-called hero pay? You could have done it last year. Well, everything we're doing is uh, to ensure that workers have uh, bigger paychecks and more worker uh, protections. Uh, we've introduced uh, legislation recently to bring in uh, really nation-leading uh, labor reforms to ensure that workers uh, are better protected. But as well, we don't just want an economy on minimum wage jobs. One of the things that Premier Ford and our government's been doing is uh, retraining people. I think of our second career program. We're spending hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to retrain uh, workers that have been impacted by the pandemic uh, to get better jobs, in-demand jobs close to home. So it's really um, all of these measures that we're taking that's going to lead to bigger paychecks for workers. Uh, uh, as you know, minimum wage is very different than a living wage in places like the greater Toronto area. A the living wage, okay, which means paying for your shelter and your food and your basic needs is $22 an hour to live in that city. How do you, is $15 enough? What can 65 cents increase do when inflation is eating up most of those gains, as you know, uh, and you need 22 bucks an hour minimum wage to live? Look, like I said, Evan, um, we need people making more the minimum wage. I think of the work that uh, our government's leading to get more uh, women and men uh, into the skilled trades. Uh, in construction alone, uh, in the GTA, we're going to be short uh, 60 or 70,000 workers over the next number of years. Many of these jobs pay $100,000 per year uh, with pensions uh, and benefits. So these are the types of things we're doing to uh, ensure that uh, opportunity is spread more fairly and widely and that people can participate uh, in, in these great jobs. On the other side, the Canadian Federation of Independent Businesses and their, their president, Dan Kelly, said the timing of the raise is hurtful to small businesses. He quoted, small firms are facing the most massive cost pressures on virtually every line of their budgets, fuel, insurance, goods and services. The CPP hike on January 1st, a surprise additional minimum wage hike is the last thing they need. What's your response to him? Well, we're, you know, we've been there for small businesses. I think of the billions and billions of dollars that uh, Premier Ford and our government has uh, given to small businesses to help them through uh, obviously a very difficult uh, time. But uh, we're also moving to reduce WSIB premiums for uh, safe employers. So we've already reduced uh, premiums by 50% and we're going to deliver literally hundreds of millions of dollars in further reductions uh, going forward. Uh, again, this is, um, to ensure that we're helping workers. These have been frontline heroes uh, during this pandemic. Uh, inflation is hitting them and everyone uh, really hard right now, so we want to give them uh, a boost. Okay. Uh, Ontario Chamber of Commerce President Rocco Rossi said that he was, quote, disappointed in the lack of consultation. 
and the departure uh, on the scheduled shift in this. Did you not consult with business on this? Look, we've worked uh, closely with the Ontario Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I, I think of the small businesses along Main Street uh, in the area uh, that I represent. Um, again, this is about striking uh, a balance. Uh, today, it's about ensuring that uh, workers have more uh, take-home pay. We've delivered billions of dollars in support uh, for small businesses across Ontario. Uh, there is a fall economic uh, statement to come uh, on Thursday, so we'll wait and see uh, what's in there. But today's a good day uh, for workers, for those three quarters of a million people that have served all of our families uh, for the last year and a half. Last time you were on the program, I asked you about the plight of gig workers who are classified as independent contractors. They're all, not even entitled to the minimum wage, now 15 bucks. Uh, why didn't you include an announcement about gig workers? They want to be employees. Well, I, I'm not done. We've brought forward uh, historic reforms uh, here in Ontario uh, under the leadership of Premier Ford uh, to support workers. Uh, there's more to come, but I agree with you. There shouldn't be a worker in Ontario making under a uh, minimum wage. Uh, that's why we've taken action to protect uh, those workers, the 130,000 workers that are employed through temp help agencies. Uh, we've heard horrific stories about uh, those workers. We've taken action to create a licensing registry. We've got uh, inspectors out uh, on the ground to crack down on the, the bad actors. Again, everything we're doing is about delivering more take-home pay, more worker protections, and spreading more opportunity uh, to every worker in Ontario. Listen, I don't criticize uh, politicians for changing their views. Uh, you know, it happens. But wh what do you say to someone who voted for your party three years ago there's an election coming up, as you know, and they're saying, sorry, I'm just trying to square the circle. These guys were opposed to paid sick leave, now they're begging for paid sick leave. These guys were opposed to making it harder to join a union, now they want to make it easier. They were opposed to the $15 minimum wage, now they're laying credit that it was their great idea. At one point, do they say, is the Doug Ford I voted for in 18 the same as I might vote for in 22? And the answer is, doesn't sound like the same guy. So what has flipped? Look, we've been faced with a global pandemic that has impacted hundreds of thousands of workers uh, across the province. And Doug Ford is for uh, the little guy. Uh, he's going to continue to have the backs uh, of workers uh, in this province and uh, also to have policies that support uh, small businesses. Uh, we're building back a, a stronger problem here. And I, I'm just trying to figure it out. Again, you're, you make the pitch to voters and people can change. but you know, opposing minimum wage and then proposing it, the same thing that you literally stripped down is, is different. Was he not for the little guy in 15 and now he's for the little guy on the minimum wage? That's, I'm just trying to figure out, was it a revelation? Did the pandemic change his ideology, I guess, is my question. Look, uh, as the Premier often says, um, he works for uh, everybody here uh, in Ontario, uh, standing up for the little guy, for all of those frontline heroes that have served our families uh, across Ontario the last year and a half. This is for them. Well, uh, it's a big day and I, to see you and the Premier there with all the Labour leaders supporting this, uh, something that uh, I don't think a lot of people in 18 thought, and there they saw it today. Uh, Labour Minister Monty McNaughton, I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Evan.